Hey, hello, hi, it's me, Nikki. You might be wondering, girl, where the hell are you? Welcome to Milan. So we're in Milan and I got invited by Pat McGrath to join the Olympics of makeup, Fashion Week. And I'm joining the Versace fashion show. Not on stage, don't worry, it's not happening. I'll be backstage, behind the scenes, with the Pat McGrath team, working on the Olympics of makeup. I'm not doing actual makeup, but who knows what's gonna happen. I get to go behind the scenes, backstage, see what the look is, see how they created, and who knows, Pat might even share a secret or two. So I'm so honored to be here. I'm so excited to be in beautiful Milan. Let's see what the Olympics of makeup are all about. I'm so excited. So we're here at Milan Fashion Week at the Versace show. We're backstage. Nobody ever gets, ever gets to see this. So come with me. This is where the magic happens. So here we have makeup. In the back we have hair. And when you pan from left to right, so many makeup stations. There's over 40 artists working on over 50 to 60 models. I think it's a lot bigger than anyone ever expected. The shows I've done, there weren't 40 artists, there were 20, not 40. This is the real deal. She has, as you said, very natural skin, a yeah. little bit of concealer. Mm -hmm. What we've used is a green cream color underneath, first of all, to shape the eye. Then we add a beautiful green pigment. Very oh. lustrous, rich, beautiful. Oh. We're like touching him. Look at his face. <laughs> so amazing. I want, I want. You look amazing. I'm so, thank you. I cannot get over how gorgeous you are right now. Stop. I, no, you stop. Okay. Stop. Can't, can't get over how gorgeous you are. <laughs> stop. Is this your first time walking for Saatchi? Third. Third? Third, yes. Now she needs a lash curl. Yeah. And then she'll need mascara mm -hmm. and then a little more highlighter. And so she got the first base done. So what is your favorite look whenever you're doing shows? Are you like all about the extreme? I love the extreme. I mean like I'm a makeup person so the more makeup the better. Like I'm always disappointed if it's no lip or whatever. <laughs> like I want Me. it all. I'm like do everything. I mean the color on top of the eye but also the shape, the way it pulls right. out the eye is so beautiful. But then there's like purple and yeah, it's still fashion, but it's sexy, which is Versace. So we should do a tutorial together. So we're gonna be uh, okay, down. 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 Here. down. I'm never letting you go. Here. Okay, I'm kidnapping her now. Bye. Hello. Oh my gosh. Hi. I was like, I got up from my chair, and I was like, oh, holy guacamole. <laughs> Are you liking the look? Yes. Yeah. It's major, isn't right? it? Right. So I was there for the um, the makeup test, and they put the liner on me, and they took it off. But like, you were like, God dang how dare it. They? <laughs> how many outfits are you doing? Just one. Just one. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Yeah. I'm doing none. <laughs> Do you want to share anything about this look? <laughs> Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you like it? I love this one. We've done the shape for Versace. Like it's a very Versace like shape, strong, slick, powerful. Aerodynamic. Confident, sexy. Aerodynamic, confident, oh, sexy. Aerodynamic. Wow. I can walk faster on the runway because I have a point. Okay, so it's only like five minutes left. This is the Olympics of makeup. And when there's a time crunch, you have two artists working on one face. So you see two sides, artist to artist. It's nuts.
And at the end of the day, I am still a YouTuber, so I really wanna try this look out on myself, see if I can channel my inner Kaya, if I can channel my inner Gigi. But I think overall, see if I have the skill set to nail the look from the Olympics of makeup at the Versace Fashion Show. I think one of the greatest differences between fashion makeup and YouTube makeup is when it comes to the base. A YouTube or Instagram base is often frowned upon by the makeup artists from the industry because we tend to use a lot more than we actually need. <laughs> and myself included, guilty as charged. I love caking it on. It's just, it's like a guilty pleasure of mine. I love a full coverage base. Something about it just makes me so happy. And it's not that I feel like my skin needs it because I'm really happy with my skin. It's just that I want it. And I feel like the greatest difference when it comes to fashion makeup and online makeup is that we just like to cake it on a little bit more. And you know what? That is fine. There are no rules when it comes to makeup. Of course, at a fashion show and you have these supermodels, you don't really necessarily want to cake it on, but when you're just playing on yourself and you're just having fun with yourself, why not? One thing you pretty much see at every fashion show makeup look is that the skin has this sort of like natural, luminous sort of wet look. It's almost as if it's their natural skin, just supercharged and beautifully perfect. And this often is achieved by not powdering the skin as much. And you're talking to the girl that loves lot of powder. <laughs> so there's ways that you can still use a lot of powder, yet still remain that sort of glossy, luminous, skin-like look. You know, there are tricks. It's tricking the eye into thinking it's wet skin when actually, in fact, it's highlighter. <laughs> now being realistic, these models only wear this look for 10 minutes on the runway, if even 10 minutes, and they're done. When you're wearing a makeup look like this all day long, you don't want it to run, you don't want it to melt down, you don't want it to break apart. So powder is almost a necessary step to make it long lasting. So the first thing I wanna go in with is with a primer that is gonna reduce the appearance of my pores yet still maintain some of that shine. Mm -hmm. For foundation, I'm using a stick foundation that is gonna give me that coverage, but overall it's gonna give me that wet skin look. Even though we're gonna set it with powder, you know, it just helps in the mind. If you wanna go for something lighter, like the supermodels, I know they only pretty much wear like a tinted moisturizer and concealer in spots. Be my guest, I ain't the one. And then I'm gonna work this in using a sponge. Now I know a lot of the makeup artists backstage like using their hands for the base to really get that skin-like finish and to buff it in seamlessly and like it's not there. I just really like a sponge. <laughs> when it comes to concealer, the same method kind of applies. Less is more. And what I see a lot happening is sort of like pinpoint concealing, finding a little spot, finding a little flaw, pouncing a bit of concealer on it and fading out the edges around it. And it's sort of like face tuning in real life. If you're using a very light coverage base, pinpoint concealing is magic. Now, if you're using a full base like me, you don't really have to pinpoint conceal because you already covered everything. <laughs> My face is gonna be like a mixture of what you're seeing at the show, influenced by online media. <laughs> now the under eye was kept clean and fresh, so I definitely wanna highlight that using my concealer and make it super flawless and fresh because nothing will be put on the under eye, so I want it to be perfect. I'm obviously setting my under eyes because I know my under eyes crease like crazy. And since we're not putting anything under there, I wanna make sure it's locked in. And one of the powders that is one of my favorites to set the skin and really make it look like skin, but still set it so it's long lasting, is the Hourglass Powder, the Veil Powder. This one has a little bit of a sheen, so it's gonna give it more of that supermodel wet skin look, but still you're set.
Now we're left with a skin that is set for the rest of the day and will look flawless all day, but still has that sheen to it. Like, see the sheen here, the sheen, the sheen. Now, another very touchy subject when it comes to fashion makeup and online makeup is brows. Now, you guys know I am a fan of a good carved out concealer brow. <laughs> In the Olympics of makeup, that is not really the trend. I personally am convinced that all models are born with flawless, bushy, full brows that just need a little comb up and we're done. I do not live that life. So I am going to try and find a nice balance between my online perfect brow and a more natural pushed up bushy brow. Um, pray for me, I'll be right back. I think my favorite thing about this eye look is that it is so strong. To me, it kind of made all the models look like strong sort of predator birds. I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous right now, but it just made them so strong and like vicious and fierce that when they walked by or when you saw them looking in the mirror, you pretty much saw every girl do this one. The Mm, I am strong and I am beautiful. And I just feel like this is such a graphic yet glam look. Of course, I made a little bit more glam. <laughs> and especially seeing it on Emily Emrata was just like, I feel like the look was almost made for her face. Like her cheek was just all her features sort of got pulled back and it just, it, oh, it's just stunning. But uh, let's, uh, let's get a kick in. So first I'm priming my eyelid. This is something the makeup artists backstage don't really do either. Although they like starting in advance and they have to do a lot of girls and there's a lot of waiting time, I always notice that primer backstage at fashion shows is sort of like, they don't really use it. You know, if it creases, they just kind of push it out, add more shadow over top, but a base isn't really used. I, however, love the finish I can get with the base, so I'm basing it up. This palette right here, the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership 5 palette is, oh, she's a beauty. This was the palette used at the show backstage and just, oh, we're gonna play with this shade in a little bit. This is like the prettiest duochrome ever. I used it in a previous video, but in some light it's pink and then in the other light it's like a reflective green and gold. It's it's out of this world. This shade is like a beautiful shimmery highlighter shade and I want that on my brow bone. Moving over to a reflective green eye pencil and mapping out the shape. First we're gonna draw our wing. And when I say wing, wing. Like you wanna take this farther out than the end of your brow. From there, going back into crease and then dragging in that inner corner a bit, sort of drawing a straight line. And then that is going into the crease too. Then once we have the general shape, it's time to fill this in using that same pencil. Okay, now dipping into this Pat McGrath Mothership palette and taking this green. This has a little bit of a darker base and we're gonna set the pencil on the outside and on the inside. And with this, you can also really sharpen up the edge of your graphic liner. Now it's time for my favorite moment of the look, going in with this duochrome green shade and pop this right on the center in between the dark shade. This will totally transform this look from basic to baboom beautiful. <laughs> like I saw this happening backstage on the models and the look is pretty, but when they add this shadow, it just takes a completely new turn. Like it's so beautiful, it shifts, it's like three dimensional. It is the shade of all shades. <laughs> Now I'm taking this shade here and this is going on the inner corner for like the prettiest duochrome gold sort of bluish tone. It's oh, so good. Okay, and now all that is left to do is lashes. Now of course the models only wore 
mascara because usually when it comes to fashion, false lashes is seen as too much, but you're on my channel and I think lashes are never too much. So I'm gonna go for a softer lash to kind of stick to the theme here. These are by Doll Lash and they are called Bambi, hello. When it comes to the rest of the skin, we saw a little bit of bronzer and a little bit of warmth on the cheekbones and the temples, but nothing too crazy. I also don't think there was any blush. There wasn't a crazy highlight. So I'm just gonna try and find a nice rote down the middle of Versace fashion runway me. <laughs> I'm adding bronzer to sort of like the tops of the cheekbones. Like I said, especially when you look at Emily or Emrata, um, her, her, just her entire face looked pulled back and snatched. And to mimic that effect, you kind of want to pull everything out. So you don't want to put a lot in the center of the face, more towards the side and up. You kind of want to start at the center and then up. And a little bit on the tip of the nose and down the bridge. Now, when you look at the spectrum of like supermodel and then where I land on the scale, I'm like way down in the bottom. And I feel like to get me up that scale, I need highlighter. I know the models didn't wear a lot of highlighter, but I need it. So I'm just gonna take a softer one and just hit the apples of the cheeks and then pull it back. Now, in Nikki terms, this is a, a very soft glow. It almost makes the, the skin look plastic, in my opinion, which I have nothing against. Of course, I'm just mimicking that dewy look that they have from not setting the base as much. I need highlighter for that because I actually set the base. Ooh, I am loving this. Oh, nose. Ooh, I love that. Oh my God, I love that. And for lips, we're going nice and nude. I'm taking this Papagraph lipstick in the color Christy. and a little bit of balm for some sheen. I think what inspired me the most being at the Olympics of makeup, being at Milan Fashion Week with the Pat McGrath team is that there's so much more to it than I feel like most people think. When people outside of the fashion industry or just the makeup industry see a runway show, they're like, oh, look, some people are playing dress up, but I don't think they know that there are so many people involved and that there's an entire philosophy and an idea and a plan and there's so many people working on a concept and I think it's so inspiring to see that, you know, there's such a common love for what the people are doing there. Of course, I, I've done Fashion Week, but I've done Amsterdam Fashion Week. And Amsterdam in category is like right here, like me and the supermodels, Amsterdam, Milan. <laughs> in Holland, when I was working for Fashion Week and when I was still in the field, you know, there were 10 to 15 makeup artists. Pat had like 40. You know, it's a whole different league. And it's just so inspiring to see that even though you think you know it all with makeup, you really don't because there's so much to it. You're never done learning when it comes to makeup. It's it's such a fascinating, amazing thing and I love it so much. So I, from the bottom of my heart, wanna thank Pat and her team and for Saatchi for having me over in Milan Fashion Week. Thank you for providing me with such an amazing experience. I think this is such a strong and fierce look that I highly suggest you trying it out and trying it out with the Mothership 5 palette, which is such a stunning palette. If you're inspired after all of this to just pick up a brush and start playing with makeup, I highly, highly applaud you and welcome to the makeup world and uh, yeah, makeup is for everybody. I wanna thank you so much for joining me here in Milan during Fashion Week. I. It's been such an honor. And yeah, if you enjoyed watching this video out and about on the roads, then please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And how do you say bye in Italian? Ciao. Ciao. Arrivederci. 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 Yeah, it's better. How do you say subscribe to my channel? How do you say like this video? Metti un piace sul suo video. Si. 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 Bye. <laughs>